What's going on you guys? Lit Man Tuck here and I am back. I apologize for being away for so long, man. But I'm back at you with another book review and today I want to talk about one of my absolute favorite books, Everyone Loves Large Chest or Everybody Loves Large Chest. Now, I will say this, folks. If you're thinking about getting a book, this is not for kids. This is not the book where you introduce your preteen or your kiddo to uh, Game Lit. Now, that's one thing some people don't like about the book. That's one thing that, you know, I don't I don't mind. Uh, some very inappropriate stuff in the book, but it is just hilariously funny. It's very funny. Uh, it is absolutely crazy. So what is this book about? So book one, it is about a mimic. And so if you, if you are familiar with video games, basically if you're playing a hack and slash game and you're running around, you know, you kill a few people and you get a treasure. You get a treasure chest. Sometimes when you go up to a treasure chest, it will turn into a monster and try to eat you. So that's basically what a mimic is. They mimic a box or a chest of gold. And whenever you go up to it, it will eat you. So one thing that I like about this book, and I have nothing against the book that don't do this. They don't even, they get straight into game mode. So a lot of game lit books, they start out, they're a regular person. Uh, normally their first name is like a one syllable name. Um, James, Jim, Cade, you know, whatever. And then, you know, they work a little bit. They normally work with computers and then they get caught up into a game, right? And I like it. I like those books as well. But one thing that I liked about this book is they didn't even explain how the hell the world came about. They just went right into game mode. And, uh, and it's from the boxes perspective, right? And so, you know, um, I'll talk about the beginning and then I'll just talk about the characters. I won't spoil it. Don't want to spoil anything. So at the beginning of the book, the box is there and uh, he's chilling and some people are walking by and he basically eats him and he keeps getting lucky because that zone, that dungeon or whatever, it's like a, almost like a green zone. It's, it's very it's for very low level characters to level themselves up. And by luck and pure instincts of a monster, he keeps leveling up. And eventually he, he gets to a high level and he's just killing people left and right. And all of a sudden the box gains this awareness and he's just going, man, he is just going around causing chaos in his own way that nobody else can except for Boxy. Um, it is absolutely amazing. And of course, I only do audio right now. And so it's another Sound Booth Theater production. And so Jeff Hayes is, is behind the uh, the ones and twos. And so he does an amazing job of just um, mimicking <laughs> this mimic, no pun intended. But this monster, he, he has, it, it is like a baby. It's like a baby with the ability to kill and eat. So imagine if you have a toddler. What if you had a toddler, right, that's two or three years old, was barely able to talk, but he was super stronger than everybody. He was way stronger than everybody that was around him, and he could do whatever he wants, basically. That's what Boxy is. He is a baby, and he eventually becomes a preteen with no uh, responsibility, and then, uh, you know, he gains a couple of familiars or helpers or de demons, if you want to call them. And so he has a succubus and a demon. And so they are his like familiars or assistants. And he can call upon them. He can summon them and they are ro they're rolling with them too. So normally in a book, you have a human or gamelet book. You have a human and he's building a city. In this one, you have a mimic and he is just tearing stuff up. It is a very chaotic book. I absolutely love it. Now, even though the book is chaotic, I've, I've gone through the whole series all the way up to book four. I know there's a book five coming out, uh, but I just wanted, I'm rereading the book and I just want to do one book at a time. But I will tell you this, even though the book seems chaotic, everything is tied in. There's They mention stuff in the first book that comes about later on and, and they do a great job of, you know, the, the story is very organized and is very well planned out, even though the book is just crazy funny and boxy is on an absolute rampage and he has these monsters instincts he, ke he keeps getting lucky and uh and he keeps leveling up and he's leveled up to the point to where a box should not be leveled up absolutely should not be and he's just figuring things out he's learning how to walk he learns how to see 
Uh, you know, he basically started from scratch. And you see this character, this monster, this box develop and, and, and a different attribute that he gains. It is just an awesome game look book. So if you have not read Everyone Lo uh, Loves Large Chest, and if you look at the book, I'm not going to lie. Uh, it has, it, he's on a box. It has the box and it has the succubus sitting there and she has a large chest. So when I, you know, looked at the cover, I, I was like, huh, what's this? Let me get the book. I had no idea what it was about. I, I knew it was inappropriate. You know, I just picked it up. Uh, I had no idea it was about a mimic. And from the beginning, like I said, they just go right into it. They don't explain how they got into this world. They just go right into it and box is causing destruction. It took me a while to do this review because uh, I was kind of nervous about this review. I was like, dang, you know, I've read this book over and over. <clears throat> it's a very funny book. It's one of my favorites. So I was going to do all these special effects and I was going to make this big just written out uh, thing with notes and stuff. And then a week or two went by, you know, the COVID and the kids going to school and stuff like that um, online and having to sit with them. So now I'm doing the book. I just pulled over on the side of the road and just decided to do the review. Uh, there's like a truck, you know, right by me. He's looking at me, seeing what I'm doing. Like, thinks, he thinks I'm talking to myself. Um, I'm trying to grow a beard out. So this is not a five o'clock shadow. It's beyond that. It's more like a 10 o'clock shadow or darkness before the actual beard comes in um you know totally no special effects going on man but i just wanted to get this review out um because it doesn't really need me to do anything special for it i mean it's such a great book it's so funny it's a great series but like i said if you don't like inappropriate stuff then skip over this book if you don't like just random just ridiculous sex scenes and blood and killing and stuff skip this book but if you don't mind that and you want something like super funny, check it out if you haven't checked it out yet. So anyway, man, that's all I got for now, man. Lit man, lit man tuck. And I will see you guys again soon when I do book two.